All right, my friends, I'm curious just to know how this went. Like if you just figured this out on your own, then you should let me know like how this one went for you. Anyway, um, do know that parts A and B were really just kind of warm ups for the stuff. This is these questions are the test level questions um, for for accelerator pre -cal, So. Okay, so let's get started. Um, so what's the trick? Well, these things represent numbers, right? So what if we try to just treat this the way we did in the previous example? So for part C here, which of these factorial statements has the larger base? Um, the denominator does. And so what if we start just expanding that until we find out we have the rest of it in terms of n factorial that's on the top there? So what would the first factorial of n plus 1 factorial be? Um, yeah, it would be n plus 1. And then what would the next uh, factor be? It would be n, and then n minus 1, and then n minus 2, and then n minus 3, all the way down to 3, 2, 1. Well, the rest would be actually n factorial. Um, and so hopefully that part makes sense. And then on the top, you have n factorial. And then you can cancel stuff out. And your final answer would be 1 over n plus 1. So if that did not make sense to you, and now it does, this would be a great time to pause the video and see how parts D and E, you know, treat you. Um, the more you can do independently, the better off you're going to be. So um, for part D, assuming that you've given this your best shot, um, which of these factorial statements has a larger base, n factorial or n minus 1 factorial? Um, I claim that n factorial has the larger base. So in this situation, it would make sense to start expanding that one. So n factorial would be equal to n for the first factor. And then the other factors would be n minus 1 times n minus 2 times n minus 3, et cetera, down to 3, 2, 1. And so the rest of it would be could be thought of as n minus 1 factorial. And then it's over n minus 1 factorial anyway. And so your final answer would have just been n. Hopefully that makes sense, everybody. If it doesn't, if right now you're just like completely lost, then since n represents a number, what you could do is you could imagine if the number stuff made sense, but now like things in terms of n, you know, is it making sense that you could play with like, what if n was, you know, uh, you know, 50, you know, then you would have had 50 factorial over 49 factorial. And so would it make sense that your answer would have just been 50? Um, anyway, so if this is not making sense in terms of n, you could play around with replacing n with a kind of high number and then come back to it in terms of n and see if it then makes sense and kind of teach yourself as you go. All right, so for part E, which one would have a larger base? I claim that the numerator n plus 1 factorial has a larger base. So let's start writing the factorials. Um, and so the first factor, factor that would be, sorry, write out all the factors. So the first factor would be n plus 1, next factor, n. And then the rest of the factors all together could be thought of as n minus 1 factorial. So your final answer could be thought of as n times n plus 1, or you could expand it out and get n squared plus n. Either way, you totally nailed it. There we go. All right, my friends, hopefully that makes sense. It's parts C, D, and E, again, that are that are the test level questions. So if that doesn't make sense yet, let me know. All right, for example four, let's give you a little practice with uh, functions that are defined recursively, um, also known as intrinsically. So earlier in the, the lesson, we talked about um, one way to define a sequence, and that was extrinsically. These are defined intrinsically. The difference is, is that these functions, you have to build them up one term at a time, as opposed to the extrinsic ones where you could just jump to any term um, straight away. So uh, for part A, it says a sub 1 is 28, which just means your first term is 28. So since the directions say find the first five terms, um, you know, you've got one down, four to go. Um, Anyway, so you know the first term is 28, and then here, this is where all the action is um, in this piece. Um, interpreting it, it would say, if you know any kth term, um, if you take away f 4 from that kth term, you get the k plus 1 term. Um, you get the k plus 1 term here. So, um, so 
I think I'll just butt out at that point and see how you do. A lot of students will do really well with part A and then not so well with part B. Um, so give it a little time, chew on it, see if you can figure it out, and then check in with me in the next video.